Hi, and welcome to the Interdimensional Voyagers, Season 2, Episode 2. This episode is on a live walk that I went on in Fetford Forest in the UK. Um, and during the walk, I discussed such things as um, structures, strange structures that I find in the forests and woods. Um, and I'll also be discussing uh, stories of uh, cryptids. Uh, sightings um, and trying to explain the unexplainable so welcome and if you like please share subscribe um, to the channel it really helps and uh, it's much appreciated so let's get into it thank you Thetford Forest's first trees were planted in the 1920s to increase and sustain the nation's dwindling supply of timber resource after the First World War. Today, Thetford Forest is the largest lowland pine forest in Britain, covering around 19,000 hectares of land near Thetford. The woodland is managed by the Forestry Commission for Timber Production, Recreation and Wildlife Conservation. This forest is great. Uh, it's marvellous to walk around. It's uh, a relaxing forest. Um, the pathways are great. Uh, um, and some lovely views. Absolutely lovely views. Uh, it's also um, got a lot of stories. Cryptid stories. Uh, ghost stories attached to it. And a lot of history. And because it's so vast, uh, it, 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 you can imagine it linking up years and years ago with other nearby forests. Uh, there's one, one nearby, which is Rendlesham, uh, which obviously everyone should know um, that uh, about the uh, Rendlesham UFO uh, that was spotted there in 1980. Um, so, yeah, there's an awful lot to uh, uh, look around and see here. Uh, and uh, you can imagine, because they're kind of like... Uh, all linked uh, it's not impossible to uh, go from one to the other uh, without um, having to get a bus you know you, you, you could actually hike your way you might have to go across some uh, farmland yeah and fields but you could uh, go from one to the other uh, it wouldn't be impossible if you look at Ordnance Survey map. You can see how uh, the green belt would be linked, which does bring me to a point that, uh, especially in winter time, I do believe that uh, Dogman, uh, especially, uh, does migrate, um, and I think he um, and she go in the winter time deeper into forests, and they move, they migrate around using green belt land, uh, and then. When spring, summer is here and there's more foliage, more cover, more food even, um, they might follow deer, then they come back here. Um, uh, it seems to be uh, like wilking around in the wintertime, a bit of an aftermath. Uh, you can't actually... It hasn't got the same vibe to it as the summertime. Them. We always explore. And what's weird about this, this is like a lean to. And if you look, there's like a piece of like metal, metal in there. It looks like a piece of a car, like maybe a car fender. And there's something in there, but I can't see. It's definitely metal. And there's no opening to this lean to. And there's no opening to the lean to. So it's completely, whatever it is, it's completely covered. So, a little creepy, for sure. Oh, no, there's more on this side. It's a different color. That's so... Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's more. Oh, dear. Let's zoom in. Spooky. We always find it, right? Mm -hmm. Very bizarre. 
that clip was from a Facebook page, public page, called Haunted and Waiting. Um, it's quite a new page. I'm a member. And uh, they have some uh, really cool stuff on there. Uh, they come across uh, uh, structures in woods. Um, they have uh, abandoned cars they find in forests. And you wonder how on earth did that car get there. Um, ghosty uh, stories. Um, just all kinds of stuff that uh, people perchance come across and they uh, are able to post it on that uh, Facebook page and discuss it, um, which is uh, kind of uh, very interesting. Um, you know, me myself, as uh, uh, I investigate different woods and forests, um, uh, if you follow my page um, on YouTube, Dogman TP Hunting, you'll notice that some of the videos uh, that I feature have uh, quite yeah. a few uh, strange uh, structures that I come across and symbols as well, a lot of um, symbols that I find in uh, woods and forests for no apparent reason they're just built and left there um, maybe witchcraft, maybe not maybe something else but anyway, I found that video quite interesting because um, it featured a teepee structure, uh, one of many that I've come across uh, that um, yeah, it was really interesting because when you look at it, it had the metal number plates inside it. And like the rings of a tree, uh, the metalwork was inside quite deep. So it had been placed in there um, and then branches put over the top. So, uh, but it, for no apparent reason. Um, and also there's no entrance or exit to it. It is just an enclosed teepee. Um, so I took it and I shared the video onto a Dogman page um, uh, and received uh, on that there was um, a few uh, people that came up with um, explanations. And I just want to feature one on here which I will put up now. And I quote, I can only give you my opinion, which is the structure is man-made. Firstly, because any animal would not have a den on show. It would be hidden away, deep in the brush. There is no function there. Made for fun by kids and forest rangers. Piling sticks is a great habitat for smaller creatures. Okay, that was uh, sent in. Um, and uh, that is pretty typical of one uh, you know uh, one school of thought for these uh, structures now I'm not saying that they're uh, uh, right and they're wrong um, what I am saying is that not all of the structures that are found can be uh, accounted for by kids making them um, or by rangers uh, let's take it as being okay so uh, if animals make them um, I don't know, first of all, of uh, any animal that would make any teepee structure that big, let alone being able to pick up branches and twigs off the floor and stacking them uh, to make a structure in a vertical manner like that. Um, usually with animals, they are uh, low-level structures, and they're kind of uh, swirled around. They're, 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 they're done like a walnut whip. They're made in a bush and they're kind of trampled. They're, they're brought along and they're trampled into like a, a circular den uh, inside of a larger bush. Um, but uh, I don't know of any animal that makes a teepee structure, um, especially one which is uh, six foot high, seven foot high, uh, sometimes even bigger. Um, I especially don't know any that can pick up branches and twigs and put them into weave them, let alone putting in objects inside them. Um, so that that I think I would discount. Um, secondly, also, uh, I would say that uh, with hiding. Well, yeah, uh, once again, if it was an animal, I agree, yeah, it would it would tend to hide more. It would make, as I say, a, a den in a bush and 
Um, it would hide deeper into that bush. Uh, a larger creature, yeah, would um, use... They tend to use what is around them. They don't tend to manufacture um, so much. Birds will make a nest. Um, birds will pick up sticks and twigs and interweave them into a nest. Um, but uh, animals, mm, not so much. Um, they will, uh, otters will, uh, beavers will, um, but uh, not in the same manner. Once again, not, not vertically, not stacking them up vertically to make a, a structure uh, seven foot in, 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 in uh, tall. Um, I, I mean, if you know of any animal that actually does make structures like this, then uh, please leave in the comments um, uh, uh, your answer. That would be uh, very interesting. I'd like to know. Um, uh, also, um, kids making them. Yeah, uh, I would imagine, especially with that one that was found. That was in the states. So I'm, I found them over here as well. The same, but. Uh, would they, um, normally, uh, if it was kids, they would make a house in the forest or woods, but they would make an entrance and an exit, somewhere to go inside of it. That would be the whole point, um, much the same as uh, with bushcraft. You would make something that would be easily accessible after it was built, something you could get inside of. If it was a hide, a blind, to watch animals by, you would want to get inside it to look out. You wouldn't make it in such a manner that it would be inaccessible. Yeah. Um, yeah, could be wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Once yeah. again, if there's yeah. anyone that um, has made these for a yeah. reason of being a hide or we'll a we'll den, a um, we'll then uh, we'll leave a comment below and uh, let me know why you've made it so that you can't get into it that would be uh, that would be interesting uh, as well um as for uh shelter for animals yes um insects you often find uh houses that are made but they're more conventional rectangle shape uh, with um, larger uh, inside of them larger like uh, bamboo pipes for spiders inside of there um, and they've usually got a covering um, a roof a uh, a weathering to the uh, top of it uh, one to keep in heat and secondly so that the the uh, creatures don't drown when it rains and they get wet and drown. Um, that would be quite important to do if you were going to build it for a, uh, a shelter for animals and small animals or insects. Um, so, on the whole of it, no. I, 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 at the moment, I discount that um, as a, a valid answer, uh, those options. Um, so, yeah, let's carry on with the walk. Oh, yeah. Really dense forest. I mean, as far as you can see, it was just dense forest. It was yeah. de yeah. just... Literally, you should, you should do, do some, take some of this video. Someone's bound to say it, I thought. But literally, um, when... Uh, at Camet Chase... At Camet Chase, you can see that exactly that bit of the Yeah, it was just unturned. I'm just going to have a quick look, look, look through here because it's. Cause you, you don't have to come because Ruby will hate it. Ruby will. But it's just. Um, hey, I'm going to back. Very dense woods, these ones. Forest, really.
upper right hand side of your screen, yeah, yeah, it's me. It's you can me. see what was called the Flatwood Monster. I'll tell you what, when it goes really deep in um, Okay, it uh, this so is an interesting silent. account. Um, and like, I want to uh, delve into this uh, story um, because uh, it's not not often talked about. Um, this one's quite a long time ago, 1952. Um, this is the story of the Flatwood Monster. It was almost fully dark on the evening of September the 12th, 1952. Edward May, Freddie May, Neil Nunley and Tommy Hyer, all young residents of the town of Flatwoods, were playing on the lawn of the Flatwoods Elementary School. Suddenly a bright light streaked across the sky overhead and appeared to crash into a hillside on G. Bailey, Bailey Fisher's farm. The boys ran to see what it was they saw in the sky. The May's home was on their way, so they stopped to tell their mother, Kathleen May, what they had seen. Kathleen called on National Guardsman Eugene Lemon and the family dog Richie to accompany her and the boys to the crash site. Upon reaching the site of the crash, the group saw a pulsing red light. Lemon shined his flashlight up the hill and the group witnessed a terrifying sight. A ten foot tall creature with a head shaped like a spade and what appeared to be dark metal dress. The creature's hands were twisted and clawed and what seemed to be its eyes glowed an eerie orange colour. It appeared to levitate off the ground. A strange sickening mist hung in the air. The creature hissed and glided quickly towards the witnesses. The group then turned and fled in terror. Some of the members of the group suffered from throat irritation, vomiting and nausea, which persisted for days. May and Lemon reported the incident to local authorities, who searched the area that night and claimed to find nothing. Another sighting of a creature, similar in description to the Flatwoods Monster, was reported by Mrs. Audra Harper not long before the infamous sighting on Fisher's Farm. Harper claimed to have seen the monster while walking through the, through the woods near her home, near the town of Heaters. Heaters is about five miles north of Flatwoods. Harper and her friend were walking to the nearby store. The road leading out of their property was impassable and rutted, so they were taking a shortcut through the forest instead of walking the road, which would have increased their trip significantly. About half a mile into their trip, they noticed a ball of fire on one side of the hills. They were passing. Harper dismissed it, assuming that one of her neighbours was fox chasing. When she glanced back, she saw something unbelievable. The fire had vanished, and in its place stood a tall, dark silhouette of a man-shaped figure. Terrified, Harper and her friend ran, escaping among the rocks and boulders strewn around the hillside. The day after the September the 12th incident in Flatwoods, another strange creature sighting occurred near Strange Creek, about 20 miles south of Flatwoods. Reportedly... George and Edith Sinopsky and their 18-month-old son were driving through the rural area between Clay and Braxton County on Route 4 when their car suddenly died. Mr Sinopsky attempted to restart the car to no avail. It was night time and the road was deserted. While the Sinopskys were trying to decide what to do, a foul, sulphurous smell filled the air and their baby began to cry. A strange bright light filled the darkness and the couple witnessed a ten-foot tall creature hovering in front of their car. The description is similar to that of the original sighting, except the monster was not wearing what was presumed to be its spade-shaped hood. Instead, its head was reportedly reptilian and bony. The creature dragged its lizard-like hand across the hood of the car before drifting away into the woods. As soon as the monster was out of sight, the car restarted and the couple sped away. Basil, come on, Basil. Basil, Basil, kid. 
Yeah. The Flatwoods incident, incident is quite an interesting incident. Um, the reason for that is because of a, a UAP or UFO that was seen previously before the sighting of the monster um, in both accounts. And the first one, it was a uh, unidentified flying object in the sky. And the second one was a, a, a strange glow in the forest. Um, lights in the forest, a uh, little like Rendlesham Forest, the incident there in 1918. Um, then after that, this monster, the Flatwoods monster, was seen. Um, the glowing eyes, the talons, the claws, um, and also it's interesting from the point of view of uh, the sulfurous smell. Uh, often, often. Uh, uh, that is um, uh, uh, goes hand in hand with sightings of uh, 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 paranormal ghosts, um, demonic, even uh, a lot of times. Whenever there's demonic entities, um, there's this sulphur smell that uh, people find. Um, another reason why um, I like that story, and it's a little known. So it's not really brought up very much on uh, uh, mainstream anymore. Is um, uh, because it is so far whack. It's it's something which, um, in your wildest imaginations, it would be hard to come up with a creature that looks like that. Um, it would be much easier to dispel a lot of um, people's criticism. By coming up with, well, I saw a creature that was more akin to uh, a normal creature found in the woods and forests. Um, more of a hybrid creature. Uh, something that would be a bit more acceptable. Um, not a creature that would be more like out of the writings of Cthulhu. Um, because you're putting yourself up there as a target for criticism by actually saying how weird this creature was. Um, it's a bit like Dogman, uh, sightings of Dogman, with the glowing eyes, either red or orange. Um, the height, the immense height of the thing, um, uh, the way in which it moves, um, it's kind of, in a way, um, putting yourself up there... Uh, for criticism, um, but also in a strange way, it gives the stories uh, a certain degree of uh, verisimilitude. Uh, verisimilitude uh, from the point of view of um, uh, the appearance of being true or real uh, in the very fact that it's um, so strange. See, that's the thing. I mean, you get these X's. Let's see if I can't get a piece of the other side. Now, I've got a theory that they make dens in the ground and cover themselves up with leaves and foliage. And that is... Uh, just, I mean, once again, why would you, why would, why would they, um, why would anybody go to the trouble of that? I mean, you can quite clearly see, in all honesty, that there is twine there, nylon twine, holding that together on this, on this uh, branch here. And again, you've got another one, up across there. So it's, it's a purposeful structure. I would say more as a symbol. Done more as a symbol. So it's, it's with purpose. And obviously it's been rubbed away here by something. You can 
can see there, like, it's been rubbed away, that has. With that twine, it's a purposeful symbol that I've seen and many other people have seen in forests all over the world. This X, archetypal X. I mean, normally you would think, okay, if they're using twine like nylon string, they've got to bring the string out here, and then, I know what, I'll make this. But we're pretty much out in the wild here, you know? Oh, it's a big forest, this one. And this one's part of Fetford Forest, so it's a big forest in the UK. Um, and then you've got that, so that X, that's X structure. And over here, Got another one over there. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Once again, it's a. X structure over there. I found an X over there, Tommy. Mm -hmm. And then you've got tree, tree bends over there in an arch. Right next to another structure here. Yeah, odd. And this one. Bass, do you want to go in there? Yeah, do you want to go in, Bess? Hello. So what to make of this one? Um, well, it hasn't got a lot of room inside. To gain entry, you have to be on your hands and knees. It's interesting that it's near an X, just over the way. We saw that. It's also interesting there's uh, tree bends nearby. This structure is quite an old one. Uh, there's not a lot of room inside. There's no weathering protection from the wind or rain. Um, interesting thing is, like, it's not the sort of thing you would, that a kid would normally make. You know, you wouldn't sort of have uh, little Johnny coming up, uh, oh, well done, yeah, like you made one of those. You picked up and spent a long time picking up the branches off the floor to intertwine them into this structure. Um, you know, just like your father used to, marvellous. Uh, I can't see that happening. I have also a friend um, that... Uh, works for the uh, ACF, um, the Army Cadet Force. Um, she has her own detachment. Um, and I asked her about these structures, and I said, oh, is it something that you do? Now, she said, yes, it is. Um, we don't make them uh, to leave them. The whole point is we make them, and then we take them down afterwards, because the uh, philosophy is um, uh, leave no trace. So uh, we wouldn't leave them up. Um, and also we would do them for the purpose of shelter, uh, not something that these are made for that we see now. Um, and another thing on the newer ones, I've noticed, uh, like here with the K2 meter, um, you do get a reading. They, they do emit and have uh, uh, electromagnetic fluctuations within them. And also temperature changes from the uh, ambient temperature outside. They're usually cooler by around one to two degrees cooler inside, uh, which I find strange. Okay, getting something. Is there anything here to let us know by lighting up these lights? They go up to red. Have you gone away now? Do you like the light up to red? It'd be really cool if you can. Uh, 
turn it off. I'll turn it on again. Just here. Mm. Wonder if someone was hanged. It was, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay, temperature, temperature to tree. Thirteen thirteen degrees. Inside the TP. Thirteen point four, not a lot of difference. Not a lot of difference. So usually I find about a one degree difference in these. They're usually one degree cooler than the uh, latent temperature outside for some unknown reason. But this one could be because it's an older unit, it's an older TP. But again, as to why someone would want to pick up all these branches off the floor and lean them up against here. It's not a two-minute job, as anyone's guess. So together with the extract from the tree bins, I think there's been activity here. So if you were to come back at midnight, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 2 in the morning, I definitely think it would be another, a different story. Yeah. Mm. You know when you went on your, you, you didn't make any of this bushcraft, anything like that? No. We only made like little shelters. You like, only made little tarmac. shelters. Was it? Yeah, it's like, you know, like using the trees. Yeah. To like spread a bit of tarmac and like tie it up. But we didn't really do any. Oh, a bit of tarp. Yeah. Just putting tarp over yeah. and... But he didn't make anything like, he like, didn't use any, anything surrounding the area, branches, twigs, and make them into a shelter that way. No. The only thing we did with that sort of stuff was making fires, but we didn't do any of this. OK. All right, cool. Yeah. OK. Mm -mm. What's cool about this, you can take this off from the like, remote control and you can sort of like go walking off like here. We could move uh, Wow, this is a big one. I mean, this is like using proper trunks. I'd like to see, uh, I'd like to see a kid make this. This is not bushcraft. But a lot of, um, a lot of like uh, as if they've been animals been rubbing or mm. scratching. I've realised that they're also like, because of how old they must be, they literally sink. So you step on them and like the whole wood will just like... Yeah. Fall in. No, that's odd. That, that is odd. Yeah. That's so soft as well. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's almost like hamster sawdust, you know what I mean? Well, I don't know. It's like, um, but why would it be strange? Yeah, very strange. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, works. Just walk up. Walk, walk up. On the branches, Tommy. The floor feels a lot like summer as well. Yeah, soft. Yeah, it's getting really soft. Soft and spongy, isn't it? Yeah, soft and spongy. Oh, nice little bump there. Falling down. That can fall as soon as it gets moved. Yeah. Looks like there's been a fire here as well, you know. Yeah, look, look. That's literally resting on a branch. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah, that goes. Again, like here, a lot of blackening of the wood. Mm. There's been a fire here, but Ooh, really thunder. Yeah, a lot of blackening of the wood, but strangely enough, not on the grounds around it. If someone's done a bonfire, then the grounds would be scorched. I found a lot of this blackening wood in areas where there's um, been a lot of dog man activity. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Here as well, look. Yeah. But the thing is, is that it's also another thing, Tommy. It's like. It's just gone to charcoal. Mm. So there's been some. Well, there's been some heat to do that, but only on one side. On all these branches. Around here, it's only on one side, yeah. facing in. On all the branches. The other side of the branches look far. I mean, that, that tree over there. Mm. Again, I'll just uh, zoom in on that one. That one, it's just burning. Looks like scorching. About three quarters of the way up. Oh, less than that, about less than a quarter of the way up the tree, but scorching just on one side. Yeah, it's just like very odd. And then you go round, and you go on the other side. Yeah. And these kind of like all splay out from the central area there. It's odd, isn't it? Mm. it but there's no scorching on the ground, so where's the fire come from? Yeah. Is it lightning?
another tree snap there. You realise how most of these are only on the bank? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, only on the base, and it's like... There's some kind of path here, there's a little bit of a path. Mm. You know. Oh, hello. Another one over there, then. Just had leaves from over there. Just had movement over that way. Strange, isn't it? And here we've got another one. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, if you did, then let me know in the comments because it helps me to know whether or not I'm doing the right thing. Whether I'm presenting this in the right way. Whether you enjoy it or not. Um, if you do, great. If you don't, let me know as well. Because um, it helps me to bring better content. And that's what I aim to do. Um, I am interested in cryptids ghosts anything unusual i hope you are as well um and i'm just after getting to the truth or getting getting a thread of truth kind of getting an arrow of the direction of what i want to you know where we're going with this because uh, there's so many questions out there not many answers um so yeah dro drop a line in the comment let me know also if you've had any interactions um, as I've had uh, with um, either cryptids or ghosts or anything unusual or supernatural or paranormal um, let me know also also if you would like to discuss it live on a podcast that's something that can be done or you'd like your story read out you'd like a voice to the story um then that's another thing that uh, uh, we can discuss. Um, that's fine. Um, if you don't, you just want to have a chat, there's something that's um, uh, a story that you want to have a chat about, uh, not online, um, then yeah, uh, more than willing, drop me a comment um, and uh, I'll, I'll put my uh, point of view. Maybe I've had much the same. Um, but either way, yeah, uh, that'd be great. And see what you think um my next episode will be from an interview i had with a guy called american guy called michael adams uh he runs a youtube channel called L the lord of ord uh and i had an interview of him for um oh about two hours the other week uh, about a week ago and i'm gonna drop that one soon um uh, within the next day or two uh, really interesting interview there was also another guy that came on as well uh, another guy by the name of Mike there was a lot of Mikes on that interview um, from MT Paranormal and uh, interesting guy we chatted mostly about uh, Dogman and cryptids as a whole really where they come from um, and what their aim is and basically we dived into do they morph how do they morph do they use light do they go through portals um so yeah it's a educated it was an educated discussion um bearing in mind with our our experience um and uh, yeah it's really good really interesting so i'm going to drop that uh, because I am I am a little bit behind on, on uh, the podcast and I do apologise for that um, there's been a few personal problems that I've been having so um, it's all sorted out now and uh, back on track so I'm going to the next podcast I'm going to drop slightly early so uh, again yeah um, 
please like and share and subscribe and all that stuff you know um and um you have been listening to the interdimensional voyagers podcast